if you respond, if you see, if you be, if you respond from your chosen frequency only regardless of what happens outside of you, regardless of how other people would define that moment and say you should be acting accordingly, regardless of all that, if you keep responding to that moment how you would in your ideal chosen state of being, then that state of being will start to spill out into your environment. And it will start to rearrange, literally rearrange the space-time structure of your existence. This is how energy operates. It responds to you. Because energy, which is everything, does not have a will. It does not have a consciousness of its own. It has a consciousness in a sense. But it does not have a will of its own. Meaning that circumstances cannot actually impose upon you anything. They never have. Circumstances have never imposed upon you a single thing. Every single choice you made was made based on your own beliefs, based on your own perceptions, based on your own choices. It may have seemed like it was somehow indicated by circumstances, but this has never actually been the case. You have simply chosen, you've simply given your permission to make decisions based on how things looked in your life. But that was still out of your decision. That was still out of your self-permission. It actually was not indicated physically by your circumstances. And so since energy does not have a will of its own, it does not have an intention for your life, it does not have an inherent set of meanings and values, it literally is up to you, consciousness. You as consciousness. You as consciousness. It is up to you as consciousness, to determine what life is like. And so in every moment, it takes its cue from you. Every moment, what we call energy, what we call this projection of consciousness, what we call this dream existence, is literally taking its cue from your state of being, from your choices, from your behavior, from your beingness. What is thought? Thought is vibration, is it not? Thought has many layers. Thought has much more of a depth than we, especially in spiritual circles, give it credit for. Thought is not just, oh, a word in your mind. Thought is actually a very profound frequency of being. It's the state of being. On the surface, it may be a word. It may be translatable to your mind. But if you enter that word, so to speak, if you enter that thought, if you tune into that thought, that thought becomes this chamber of resonance. It becomes this overwhelming vibration that's then imposed upon the presence energy that's always available to you, that's always responding to you. And so in that way, thought does, in that sense, create reality. So when I use the word thoughts create reality, I don't mean necessarily just on the level of words. I mean the entirety, like the holistic notion of what a thought is. Thought is vibration. Thought is what is, in a sense, in between you as consciousness and the world that you perceive. It's your... It's your um, means of imposing your energy upon creation. And all these words that may sound negative, they're positive in my opinion. Imposing energy is your slave. Those are positive ideas. I don't mean them in the negative connotation that most people use them. I just describe their function. So if thought is frequency and frequency creates reality, then it's kind of crucial to learn how to master your vibration, is it not? because it will shape everything. Not that circumstance is ultimately that crucial to your being, but it shapes everything. It shapes your state of being. It shapes the thoughts that will flow from that. It will shape the actions you take. It will shape to what degree you will be expressing yourself. It will shape the relationships you have. It will shape the lessons you learn, how effectively you learn them, how fast you learn them, how much you expand from them or contract from them. It will shape your physical reality, your actual circumstances. It will shape your space-time experience. So in that sense, thought is pretty crucial. So we can dismiss it. And that's very helpful as a reset button, just to relax, relax for two to five seconds, give away all personal self ideas, give away all identity, give away all thoughts, give it back to life, give it back to God, give it back to source, give it back to presence energy and see the clarity that you are. Notice the freedom that you are, the space that you are, the consciousness that you are, that which never leaves the container for the contents. Contents is presence energy, formed by presence energy. You are the container, ultimately speaking. But you are also its contents. You are also presence energy. Because creation is not complete without expression. 
the one is not complete without expressing itself. That's why it's expressing itself. Otherwise, it wouldn't do it. If it was already complete in that sense, if it had nowhere else to go, it would not be having this experience. You, as a co-creator, as an individuation of this all that is consciousness, would not be putting me in this chair right now, along with everyone else in the chair next to you. So, pick a thought, but pick wisely.